Now when we read about the first man, Adam, becoming a soul living, Paul had referenced that Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And the King James Version reads, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So Adam had a fleshy body with soul breath life in it. He was alive physically. The Lord Jesus Christ was also born with a physical fleshy body which also had soul or breath life in it. Just the same as Adam did. Jesus Christ was alive in the physical realm. Also during his life, God gave to Jesus Holy Spirit upon the same condition by which he had given it to Adam when Adam was alive. Of course, that condition was to believe and obey what God told him to do. Jesus Christ chose to always do those things which pleased God, his Father. When Jesus was put to death, when he was killed, crucifixion, and he, of course, he was buried for three days and three nights. God graciously raised him up alive from being dead, from among the rest of the dead people. And God gave him his new spiritual body. This is when the resurrected Christ became a spirit making alive. He is the second and last man from the viewpoint that he is the new kind of man that God has created. Christ now has his new spiritual body, and the life of which is that life-making spirit. And so he cannot be put to death anymore by anyone or anything. Plus, he has the ability to cause others to be made alive at a future time. Now let's look at verse 46 where Paul continues and he says, but emphatically, the spiritual body is not first. It doesn't come into existence prior to the soulish body of a human being. But the soulish body is first. You know, a human being comes into existence first with a soulish body. After that, the spiritual body comes into existence. That is, at the time of resurrection, Jesus Christ, when he descended, of course, from Adam, he first lived in his fleshy or physical body, just as Adam did. However, Jesus Christ was killed, but he had always done those things that pleased his Father. And God raised him up alive, and giving him his new spiritual body. And now he has that life-making spirit. He is alive. In verse 47, Paul says, and now he's showing some differences between the resurrected Christ and the first man, Adam. The first man was molded by God out from the earth. So Adam's body originated from the earth. It was formed from the land, the ground, the earth that we live in today. The planet earth and therefore he was dusty his body's consistency was that dug out or loose earth that's on the ground the soil the second man that is the resurrected Christ is spiritual his body's consistency is spirit because he was made by God out from heaven Christ's body originated from heaven, and this figuratively refers to God himself. God is the one who gave him his new spiritual body. God raised him from being dead. Paul also talked about the Lord Jesus Christ receiving his new spiritual body in Romans chapter 1 and verses 3 and 4. Here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul continues, of the sort that the dusty person is, or Adam was in his body, of this sort also are the dusty people, 
Remember, he was made of the earth, the dust of the ground. So of this sort also are mankind or human beings, such as Adam and all of those born since that time. We have a fleshy body with the soul life, just like Adam had. And of the sort that the heavenly person is, the resurrected Christ, who is alive now with his new spiritual body, of this sort also will be the heavenly people, resurrected mankind, human beings who will be resurrected from being dead, will be given their new spiritual bodies, those who believe regarding the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll see that a little bit more detail as we continue. Christ is the one who has already been raised from the dead and given his new spiritual body. Emphatically, according as or just as we human beings that live today, just like Paul and us today, holy people, carry the image of the dusty person, or we have the image, the icon resemblance of Adam, who is made from the earth, or he has that dusty consistency. Let us absolutely carry the image of the heavenly person. Now when Paul writes, let us, that's a polite command or a very strong suggestion, advising us holy people to continuously bear as wearing or supporting the icon, the resemblance, the representation of who? The resurrected Christ, who has already been raised from the dead. He is the second and last man. Indeed, let us carry this kind of life. We've already received that gift of Holy Spirit, and so we can live accordingly. Now, some Greek texts read that last phrase, as we will carry, as though it is only referring to the future time. But remember, we have already received the Spirit of Christ in us. We have the life now in us. We don't have our spiritual bodies yet, but we will receive that at a future time. So it's referencing both now to let us live correctly and the future, our hope. Before we, holy people, Christians, received the gift of Holy Spirit, we only had our fleshy bodies with its soul or breath life. That was the image of the first man, Adam. However, we will never be like that again, because from the time that we first believed regarding the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, we received that gift of Holy Spirit, and we can never lose the gift of Holy Spirit. That gift of Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ in us. We have that image within us. So today, as we await the return of the Lord Jesus Christ to gather us together with him in the air, the coming of Christ to gather us with him, we are three-part beings. We have our Holy Spirit life within our physical bodies. We have our soul or breath life. We're alive physically. And we have the physical fleshy body. The Spirit of Christ in us is our deposit our token that at a future time we will receive all that has been promised to us in Christ. We will receive our spiritual bodies like his glorious body with its spirit life. There's no doubt but that we will receive it at a future time. 